Hey, it's Joe Farrow Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about smart lights and smart switches. The reason I'm doing this video is in the last couple of years, this technology has exploded. And for me, getting into home automation, it was very intimidating to hear people talk about, you know, do you have an RGB CCT bulb or do you have a WLED controller? Do you have Tasmoda? I just didn't understand these terms or why they were important. People were talking about the Shelly brand really highly. I didn't understand what that was. And when you looked it up, it just wasn't apparent to me of what these things did. So I wanted to make a video that gave you basically the boilerplate rundown. So if you haven't done this and you're trying to pick out hardware, plan your home automation system, you'll know the technology that's available today, why it's cool, and some of the things to look out for. This is what we're gonna go over. We'll go over switches, lights. I'm gonna talk about LED strips a bit also because there's a lot of lingo there that I didn't understand. And some of the best places to get LED strips, it seems like the better price you get, the more you have to know technically. So I'll try to get to a place where you can get a good deal on that. And then we're gonna talk about automation challenges and some of the like future looks of where this stuff is kind of going or things that make you think about things differently because you don't have to abide by the rules of a standard home anymore as far as like this switch controls these lights only. That all breaks with home automation and it becomes more convenient and more powerful. So we'll talk about that. First, so we have to start with the basics. So let's talk about types of switches. You have dimmer switches, obviously, right? But the thing I know about dimmer switches is not all bulbs or fixtures are dimmable. So don't go ahead and get a dimmer switch unless you've checked your bulbs. If you do that, it's really, it's really bad. You can damage the fixture or blow the bulbs out. I think I've done both at this point. Neutral, no neutral. You'll see when you buy these switches, it'll say neutral required. I'm gonna assume that you're familiar with electrical if you're hooking up the switches yourself. I don't wanna be the person that's trying to teach you that part of it. So if you're familiar with electrical, you know the white wire is a neutral wire. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your switch out, look for it in the back of the box. Smart switches require them. Dumb switches don't, right? You're just in the middle of the line and load and you're just switching uh, mechanically on and off. But a smart switch needs power so it knows to listen. It means it needs that white wire. There are very few smart switches that will work but Innovilli and I think Shelly both make one that will, where you, if you don't have the white wire, you can get something going. Just something to look out for or understanding why it says neutral required. And when you do the install, be ready for that because it's very unusual for a switch to need a white wire, but on smart switches, that's just how it is. Three-way switches, if you're walking down a hallway, you have a light switch, you flip it on, you walk and you flip the one off at the end. That was two switches, controlled one light. That's called a three-way switch. In smart switches, these are weird, you buy a three-way switch and then you don't buy a second one. You buy an add-on switch or an auxiliary switch. And it will tell you on the three-way switch which model you need for the other switch. Okay, so that's just a difference between home automation things and things you would do if you weren't in home automation. Wi-Fi compatibility, a lot of these you can tell right off the bat. They'll say compatible with Google or Amazon's ecosystem. That's super handy, but it can be proprietary. So make sure whatever home automation system you're using, if you're using a smart hubs or a home assistant, make sure that it has an integration that will work with that brand. A lot of these will end up using Tuya or smart home. Some of them can be converted. If you're looking for a conversion, you're gonna match that switch brand, go ahead over to Tasmoda's site and see if you can convert it over. With conversion, what Tasmoda is, is a alternative software that you load onto it that makes it more friendly for the home automation enthusiast, let's say. ESP Home is another one that you can load on a lot of these things that will also get make it a lot more friendly and accessible. Z-Wave and Zigbee are automation standards. They're made for home automation. Now, a lot of these switches tend to cost a bit more, but if you buy those, typically you can interface them very easily with your home automation system, provided you have a hub or a dongle. Home Assistant's a great example. If you're running Home Assistant, you use a dongle, which is a USB stick that talks to these. An inbox switch is something that's actually in the electrical box. In the upper left-hand corner here, I have a Shelly switch. Shelly is the brand that made it. There's also Sonoff switches that are like this. They're very, very small. They fit in the back of the electrical box. And what they'll do is you'll run your wires from the electrical box into that, and then you run it into your switch. You can also do this with lights as well. The reason this is really cool, number of reasons. One is if you put it behind your light, you don't have to worry about that whole neutral, non-neutral thing, because there's going to be a neutral by your light. The other thing is it converts something that's dumb into smart. So if you're doing this with lighting, it's super powerful because you can get designer lights that would normally look a lot better than home automation lights, but then make them smart. So you can convert it to smart. You do the same thing with switches. You can have a designer switch or an odd colored switch or whatever, put this behind it and convert it to smart. They typically are Wi-Fi based and uh, that will basically hook into your network. The other cool thing, they're a lot less expensive typically. I would say five to $20 US 
versus $30 to $50 US for the Zigbee and Z-Wave switches. Relay disable switches on a switch, you typically have what's called a relay. Now a relay is an electrical component. When you give it power, you can uh, either close it or open it. If you use that, basically what you're doing with a smart switch is you're controlling that relay to send power up to the lights. If you have smart lights, this becomes a problem. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the video. The thing I want you to know here is look for that as a feature. If you're gonna get smart lighting, it's something you wanna consider. Status lights, if you look in the lower left-hand corner here, I've got some light switches with lights on the LEDs on the side. These are status lights and they are typically programmable. It's a feature that might be really cool. You can have a light turn on, let's say if the garage door is open, kind of nice. And then scene modes means that you can hit like maybe up twice or up three times or down twice, down three times, stuff like that to have the switch do something different. So for instance, um, for me, like when I walk in, I can have my lights, I hit down once and it turns the light off in the entryway. But if I hit down twice, it can be the message that says, okay, I'm going to sleep, turn every light in the downstairs and my TV off. It basically activates a scene and we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's switch over to lights, talk about those for a second. Now, of course you have dimmable and not dimmable lights. If you have dimmer light um, that is controllable, that's a smart light, it doesn't use the dimmer switch to control the brightness. I messed this up the first time. I had a dimmer switch, I had a dimmer light. I started dimming the switch and the light freaked out. It freaked out because it's expecting now full power so it can control the brightness of the light itself. When you're dimming the switch, you're giving it less power and it doesn't behave well. So be aware of that. There's what are called colors of lights, which is like your red, green, blue colors, but there's also warmth of light or temperature. Temperature is typically measured in Kelvin and it indicates how like warm the light is, how kind of yellow if it's warm, all the way down through a white, which is called daylight, and then a bluish light as well. This uh, Kelvin measurement is very important. If you buy a light and it has the, the tuning of this, or it says what the Kelvin is, that's the type of light it is. You'd wanna match everything in the room. Now a CCT light means that that's actually adjustable on the fly. So the light can be more yellow if it's on the different end of the spectrum, on the lower end or the warmer end, but it can go all the way up to the higher end of the spectrum, which makes it more of that bluish light. The bluish light's gonna be a higher color contrast, which is really good if you're doing makeup or doing activities or crafts. The lower end's gonna be more relaxing for bedrooms. And then in the middle, you've got things like garages or kitchens that you wanna have well lit. Red, green, blue, this is lights that change pretty colors and they can mix, they're pretty neat, but they make a terrible white. That's why they made RGBCW, which is cool white or warm white, the WW. These are a fourth LED of either warm white or cool white color then help these lights make a better white at the end. The other thing that light does though, is it makes all the colors more vibrant because it's adding a white to them and it can give it a better uh, color palette. The final light is the Voltron of lighting. It's all of these features added together. It's the ECCT. They won't put that on the box typically. They're gonna probably call this some marketing thing. Philips Hue or RGB CCT, I just did a review on the Wiz lights. They also do this. These can do all of the colors and all of the different white varieties and typically thousands of variations of those whites in between because you're actually tuning how, you know, what you want that color to be. So be aware RGB CCT is a thing and it's pretty much like the epic light bulb if you have those. Let's talk about LED strips for a bit. Now LED strips have two main types. There, there's a lot of types and I'll link you to a video uh, of all of the types that was very well explained by the hookup. But the two main types I want you to focus on for now is where all of the LEDs are the same color, or each LED can be a different color. Now, the one where they can be a different color, that's called individually addressable. There's a couple of things to not remember. The WS2812B, that is the, basically the model behind that individually addressable light, and that's the chip that allows that to happen. There's also NeoPixels, which is Adafruit's branding on a WS2812B. These lights are really cool because they can change colors really fast and do some really cool effects. Now there's also waterproof ratings on lights. You have like something like IP67. Thing to know there is the first number means one thing and the second number means another. So the six is like the intrusion, like, you know, can it have dust in it or whatever? And the seven might have to do with the second thing. I'll put a chart up that kind of explains this better. 12 volts and five volts are the two main voltages for these LED lights. At the end of the light, you're gonna have something called a controller and that's what tells the light what colors to be. So let's talk about those for a second. ESP8266 is what a lot of them are powered by. Those are flashable by what's called Tasmoda or ESP Home. I talked about those a second ago. There's also WLED, very popular, makes them very open and very, very easy to control. There's a ton of animations built into it. So be aware when you hear the things like, you know, I have a WLED light strip, that means that there's an ESP8266 Arduino. 
that is controlling that light and flashed with WLED. When you're shopping for these, you'll typically see something where it says it comes with a controller or it doesn't. If it comes with a controller, it's typically going to be something that uses an IR remote or it'll say it works with Amazon and Google. If it works with Amazon and Google, it's most likely smart home or Tuya based and you're going to want to make sure those work with your home automation system. For those that are following me for smart home, absolutely you can convert these to work with home assistant and that works out great. Shelly is also another brand that makes RGB controllers now. So, you know, something to look for is LED strip controllers to get an idea of what's out there and how to control your strips. Let's talk about scenes and routines real quick. If you have smart lights and you have six lights in your room, you do not want to control them by turning on and off each one of them. That would be terrible. So you use what's called a scene and you set it for what you want. All lights on, all lights off, lights dim, you know, daytime, daytime bedtime, whatever. You give them names and then you say, okay, activate this scene and the lights will all go to that thing. If you're on the uh, Amazon ecosystem, you want to use routines. Routines is just their name for scenes. And keep in mind, these can be more than lights. You can have your LED lights, your overhead lights. You can also have something like your television turn on and off. You can have lamps. You can control more than just your lighting with a scene, and you should. I really like using the routines because I can have the Amazon ecosystem do things like tell me news, tell me weather, um, tell me the word of the day or whatever, and turn my lights on in the morning. So just different things you can do with automation, but understand this is how you would control a bunch of lights. It's the main reason I mention it. Look into how to set up scenes for whatever controller you're using. Almost everyone I've ever seen supports it. Here's some automation ideas I listed just to give you an idea of things you can do. You know, I'll talk about a couple of the specific ones that I think are really neat. Um, LED strips should definitely pair up with your lights. You should never have to go turn your LED strip on after you turn your lights on if that's something that you commonly do anyway. Just pair them up to be the same uh, thing where your lights turn on, your LED strips follow them. The other one, motion activated, <laughs> child door open. This is one that's kind of dear to my heart right now. Uh, my daughter is two and a half years old and we basically put a security sensor on her door just like you would put on an outside door or window. So that whenever she opens her door, the magnetic latch notifies our security system. That can be used to control a light, turn a light on and let us know, hey, our daughter's trying to sneak out um, or has woken up and has decided to leave her room. Uh, which is never great if you have a two and a half year old running around the house uh, on their own. So using lighting and switches, really cool automation idea. Another fun one, of course, is having your outdoor lights change with the holidays. And I've seen my buddy set up one. He set up a Philips Hue and a uh, setup so that it made his Halloween porch look amazing. So some really cool things you can do with these lights. Um, and of course, there's all the other st stuff for security and so on. So be aware of that. Let's talk about the classic problems. Now, one of them is the, uh, I call it classic out of a little bit of cheeky, but if you have a smart switch and you have a, a smart light bulb, you turn off the smart switch, it kills powered light bulb. The light bulb can no longer function as a smart light bulb. It can't function at all because it has no power. So the way you solve this is you use one of those switches where you can disable the relay. You disable the relay in the switch. Then when you turn off the switch, you have it send the off signal to your home automation system, which then talks to the light, which did not lose power now because the relay is not there. See the key? Make sure the relay is not there. The other thing you might want to look into is if you have smart bulbs that dim, you may not want to put a dimmer in your wall that's a smart dimmer. You may want to go with a toggle or a scene controller, or again, make sure that you can turn off the relay. The reason being is if you dim a smart bulb, it does not behave well. It doesn't treat it well and it can damage it. So be aware that this is one of the common problems I've seen or that I've hit. And when I've talked about it to other people, they're like, yeah, I've hit that too. So one of the solutions for it. Another one, of course, is uh, you can cover up the switch, replace the switch. I've seen people put tablets over the switches, things like that. Um, use switches that are like Zigbee based that are meant for home automation that don't have relays at all. They're just totally different type. Any of those solutions, basically make sure that you don't cut power to your smart lights if you're using them. Okay, now this is the one where I get to just kind of riff a little bit on the future of this and some of the things you can do. You no longer have to think about your lights as a room, right? So I don't have to think about my lights in this room as they all turn on, they all turn off. I can think of them as individual pixels. I can do things like have some of them be brighter, some dimmer. In my movie mode in this room, the light that's over the couch is dim and the rest of the lights are off. I just watched the Zack Snyder Justice League. Absolutely loved it. 
such an amazing, uh, I don't want to call it a remake, but an amazing envisioning of what he created, but it was four hours long. You can bet I was taking lots of breaks. I was having snacks and I was doing restroom breaks and stuff and having a dimly lit light over the couch so that I could see where I was going and stuff. Very, very helpful. So that becomes possible because that light doesn't have to obey that switch being saying, you know, you're going to be turned off. That switch is a smart switch. Those are smart lights and we can do more. We can also do things in like large rooms like garages. We don't have to have the entire garage on if we're working in the corner. We can have just lighting over that area and have it on full blast. And it's just more ambient or nicer that way. You don't have to take up the power of lighting up everything. You can also do cool things like circadian rhythm where at the beginning of your day, maybe your lights are a little bit more yellow, less blue, less eye strain. And then they change throughout the day to more of the daylight hue in the middle of the day. And then at night, go back to that yellow to kind of simulate the sunset. This is really great and healthy. It can help you with your sleep patterns. And also it's just more natural. It actually, they've found out that like looking at cell phones or looking at computer monitors late at night, like I'm doing right now, really messes up with your sleep. So be aware of that and you can use smart lighting to kind of help circumvent some of those effects. One last problem that you might hit is the thing where you turn the light off and it doesn't turn all the way off. It either flickers or it's dimly lit. And this is typically on a dimmer switch where you're not using a neutral wire, you're just using the black wire. In that case, you get with this thing here, which is called a shunt capacitor that assists the load and helps you get the light all the way off. This is what it looks like. I'll link to it in the description so you can read up on it. It's just another home automation problem that you might hit. And I want to thank my friend Lou who hit this and actually informed me on it. Thank you so much. If you like content like this and want to see more, please like this video and then I'll make more videos like this. And if you subscribe, you'll see that I do a whole bunch of stuff with home automation, geeky gadgets, uh, video game stuff, all sorts of things. So I try to keep it fun on this channel. I really appreciate my viewers. Thank you so much for supporting me and I'll see you next time.